And we're going to stand here for a minute and breathe. <sighs> of yoga and then we're going to do a little kapalabhati because that is one of Maggie's favorite things. Ready for kapalabhati? Well, the guy outside doing his lawn or yard work is too interesting, huh? Sometimes she does Kapalabhati with me. Then I'm going to bend the knees, keeping my heels on the ground and hugging my knees together. So I'm really lengthening the calf muscles and I'm really strengthening the inner thighs and the base of the spine, the, the Mula Bandha, the perineum, is hugging up and in to keep Maggie and me supported. It's like yoga with weight. And if I feel solid, I'll lift my arms. You can lift your arms too. Arms up. Can you do it? You are just so interested in the yard work and man outside. Our neighbor is doing some yard work. And you're breathing. You'll, you'll recognize right away that it's harder than regular Utkatasana chair pose to do it with your baby girl or boy. Keep breathing. And then rise up. Straighten the legs, lift the back of the heart so the front of the heart lifts. And we do back bends together. Good job. Oh, you could see her smile. It's the cutest thing. You back bend it. And then exhale and come back to neutral. And you always check in with your little one, make sure they're good and in. And then maybe you hold the sacrum and the head of your baby and you lean forward. When I do this, I'm hugging my belly in a lot and I'm internally rotating my thigh bone. And I'm stretching my hamstrings and giving my little girl a little ride. <laughs> you want to do it again? <laughs> it's fun, huh? It's awesome. Now we're going to bend, whoops, we're going to bend the knees again while she back bends. Now that's even trickier. <laughs> and we're going to rise up and I'm going to put my hands on my hips and step one foot back. It doesn't matter which foot back. You just got to make sure you do the other one the next time. Okay. I'm starting with my left foot back and I'm keeping my hips square. My hands are helping and I'm bending my front knee toward the baby toe side of my foot so that I track the knee in line with the toes. If the knee goes in a different direction than your toes, your knee is in trouble. It doesn't like that. <laughs> and in this lunge, my back heel is down. I'm doing it with the back heel down. And I'm trying to hug the floor with my back toes so that my arch lifts. And that kind of waken, awakens my back leg so that my front leg isn't doing all the work, even though the baby is over the front leg. Ba. Ba. You want to do some Kapalabhati breath? So my little girl loves Kapalabhati breath so much that it helps focus us if she gets distracted. So my foot pattern is warrior one. And when I felt stable, when Maggie felt like she was focused enough that I could lift my arms. I did. <sighs> Warrior one position. And then I'm going to bring my hands back to my hips. I'm going to internally rotate my back thigh so that my heel comes off the ground. I'm going to step forward. It's a little different with a baby. Then I'm going to bend my knees again. I'm going to send my right leg back, which is my second side. It's really okay if you did the other leg <laughs> order. <laughs> and I'm grounding the back foot's heel, even though I'm keeping my hips square to the front of my mat. And I'm trying to bend the front knee toward the baby toe side of the foot. And I'm trying to lift the back foot's arch to wake up the back leg. And if I feel stable here, 
You need some mook -mook? Yeah, you want some mook -mook? We can do that. Because we have this nice wrap on. We can have anything we want right here. So I'm still in my warrior one stance. I'm lifting the base of my spine in the Lubanda. And when I feel stable, I lift my arms and I, I'm taking prayer and clasping, I'm kind of doing steeple fingers and clasping the fingers except for my index fingers and looking up. This pose is called warrior one because there's one pointedness in the limbs. <sighs> And you breathe, right? And then you exhale out. And you pick up the back heel. You internally rotate the back thigh. You step forward. And you feel Tadasana again, that first standing pose, to make sure you've still got your weight balanced equally on the feet. It's important to go a little slower when you're balancing your baby's weight, not just your own. Just like when you were pregnant, it's it's very similar to do yoga with your baby in a wrap as it is to do yoga when you're pregnant. You have to compensate for the different center of gravity in your body or bodies. So I'm going to bend the knees again. Utkatasana is so grounding that it's kind of a good stabilizer. You might find you can go a little deeper when you feel a little warmer. She's happy because she's still nursing. And then you rise up, and you lift the heart. And then as I exhale, I'm gonna clasp my baby sacrum and head and pull forward, even while she's nursing. <laughs> Good. Good. And then, you can even hear the yard work, right? And then I'm gonna pause in the middle again. And I'm going to send my left foot back again. This time I'm going to externally rotate my hips. So I started with my hips facing the front of the mat. Now they're facing the long side edge of my mat. I'm still tracking my front bent knee over the baby toe side of that foot. And I'm grounding the back heel and the knife edge of the back foot. And I'm still trying to lift both arches by hugging the floor with my toes. I'm also trying to have my spine right in the center vertical stacked. And just like we did in the other poses, we're hugging the feet toward the midline, toward the belly button, so that our lumbar banda, our perineum, lifts. That's what's going to give us stability here, even while we're holding our baby. And then we lengthen the arms once we feel stable in the base. And we look out over the front fingers in warrior two. Two because there's two limbs pointing out, right? That's why it's warrior two. It's not because it's harder. I think actually warrior one might be harder in my body. And she's happy because she's still nursing. Good. And then I'll inhale and I'll lengthen my leg. And I'm going to send my right hip back as I lengthen my right arm forward. We're tilting sideways. Can we handle it? I might have to hold on to my baby here, depending on your baby's weight. I'm doing a modified triangle pose with the strength of my legs and hips. And then I'm going to bend that knee. I did that mostly as a counter pose to warrior two to kind of help the front leg straighten and feel, I don't know, integrated after bending for a while with Maggie's weight on me. So now I'm back in the middle. I take Tadasana. <sighs> and then I send my right foot way back for warrior two on the other side. So I'm grounding that foot, the knife edge of the foot down and the heel down, and I'm lifting the arch of that foot. You still want to nurse, sweetie? Yeah, but you can. I bend the front knee over the baby toe side. I hug the belly and I hug the perineum up and in. And I feel my center, I feel my spine right in the center. When I'm ready, I open the arms and I look over the front fingertips. There's a real hugging in of the belly to support the two of us. I love the age of self-serve nursing. It's, it means my hands are still free, and she's still getting what she needs. The power of baby wearing. I get a little yoga, and she still gets milk. 
And then I'm going to lengthen that leg so that I can stretch it out after it bent for so long. Maggie's going to help with triangle modification, triangle variation. I'm lengthening my left leg now. And then we're going to come back up. If your baby's littler, you probably have an easier time with triangle than I, when she was littler and I used to do triangle with her in the wrap. I could get my hand all the way down 